well, on his own GB News programme last night, Nigel Farage vowed to find out what actually happened. I want to get to the absolute truth of what happened here. How could it be right? And it doesn't matter whether it's me or anybody else. How could it be right that my banking status and the amount of money I may or may not have in my personal and business accounts are being discussed with the business editor of the BBC and then disseminated to a wider world? How can that be ethical? How can that be legal? How can that be moral? I want to find out the truth, and I'm blooming well going to find out the truth. Is he going to find out that truth? He is like a dog with a bone. Patrick O'Flynn, political commentator and former NMEP, is here now with his take on all of this. Looked like they picked on the wrong guy there. Uh, doesn't it just? Nigel, not for the first time, has an establishment on the run. This is now the financial establishment uh, on the run. And Dame Alison Rose, the chief executive of uh, NatWest, is in a very hot seat. People saying that the BBC has thrown her onto the bu under the bus. I see it more like they they've tied her to the rail track, I think, because their version of events given to Nigel yesterday said that there were two interactions with this senior and trusted source... Uh, soon after each other. That lends itself very much to the thought that there was an informal conversation and then... A, a relationship the going on. Yeah, yeah, an informal conversation perhaps at a dinner in the evening and then Simon Jack, the business editor, checking the next morning, are you sure, in a formal asking mm. that I can use this information, which very much lends itself to the theory that it was Dame Alison herself shocking. who breached Nigel's... If that is true, uh, shocking yes. that there would be such a breach of privacy. Yeah. But in terms of a, of a, of a policy, if that policy mm. was to exist, also equally shocking. Yes, well, the underlying um, memos that came out from Coots, I think, uh, prove... Uh, there was an ideological hostility to Nigel and his uh, very widely supported views on a number of policies from immigration to Brexit. Um, and that cannot be right. And I think, you know, the high ups in banking are having to retreat from that. Um, I think another aspect of the story is the, the bigger political aspect, which is that I think Nigel Farage has gained an extra level of authority and dynamism from his handling of this story. And the people I speak to at senior levels of the Conservative Party are frightened of him, more frightened of him than they'd ever been. They think they've got the other smaller parties on the right basically under control. None of those parties broke through in the recent by-elections. But I am told by a very senior Conservative source the one thing on that front that really keeps Rishi Sunak awake at night is the idea, could Nigel Farage come back in the nick of time for the general election, in which case I suggest the Conservatives would be toast? Well, certainly, I think, you know, a lot of people would see Nigel Farage as a, as a divisive character. They either love him or loathe him. And yet everybody seems to be united behind him in outrage at this story because it mm. seems a fundamental pillar of a, of a fair society that your political views should not be relevant to your bank. Absolutely. I think there are, there's a core of people on the fanatical left who can't get over their antipathy to Nigel Farage and just sort of relish the fact he's been caused difficulties. But the vast majority of people, you know, understand there are certain core rights and you can't really exist in a modern society uh, without being able, to, being able to, to do your banking. Mm. Patrick, would, he, would, uh, would it be beyond imagination to think that Nigel Farage would be welcome in some form within the Conservative family? Well, that is a very interesting question, Eamon. Undoubtedly, three, four years ago, the answer would be a complete, that's not going to happen, it could never happen. But there are people high up in the Conservative Party who, if it loses the next election, would be prospective leaders who I think um, might change the goalposts on that. If Nigel Farage speaks for, say, about a third of potential Tory voters and they really like him and they identify him in a, with him in a more powerful way than any Tory figure, 
then I don't think it's inconceivable that the, the, the hands of friendship, uh, in order to kind of, quote, reunite the right, might be extended to Nigel after the next election. It's, it all depends on how it goes. And it also would depend on, would he be interested? What would his price in terms of the, the political orientation of the Conservative Party be? And would they be prepared to pay it? But it's a very astute question. It's not off the table anymore.